Hi, hello Lana. Uh, so welcome. Today we are going to look at uh, distributed systems, right? So uh, I've also shared the link within the description so that you can visit our website uh, www.lanascoach.co.ke that is going to expound more about uh, distributed systems. Yeah. So always click on that particular link so that you can uh, get uh, more information from our website. All right. So uh, we're going to look at uh, uh, distributed systems and these are the contents we are going to actually understand what a distributed system is uh, we are also going to look at the various types of distributed systems right even around you where you are you there's a kind of a distributed system that you could be using uh, without your knowledge and of course you're going to uh, give examples of distributed systems that maybe you are familiar with or not familiar with and also we're going to identify some common characteristics right and look at the design issues that comes along with this particular uh, distributed uh, system. So of course, you're going to mention the advantages and uh, disadvantages. All right, perfect. So what is a distributed system? Yeah. Uh, now, uh, the kind of definition that you give to this particular uh, uh, system actually has the components, it has the coordinates and messages. So those are vital components or aspects of a distributed system. So we can always say that a distributed system is one in which components are located at network computers that communicate and coordinate the actions only by passing messages. Uh, if you take a look at maybe your computer or the laptop that you're using, uh, we refer to that as a standalone, yeah, a centralized uh, system whereby you can always take control of different aspects, right? But when you have a decentralized system, that could actually mimic the arrangement of a distributed system. Yeah? In that, in a networked environment, you can have state of the various uh, files that you have within your, uh, with, within your computer, such that you can always access a different, uh, you can always access your files in different uh, kind of systems. So a distributed system is more or less the same as a decentralized uh, system that actually is implemented on a networked uh, infrastructure. So a thorough understanding of our computer network actually uh, functions is very, very important for this particular uh, course. So uh, of course, I've mentioned that they'll have some kind of uh, characteristics. Of course, the concurrency yeah, of components. Uh, the various components within uh, the distributed system must always work concurrently, right? Uh, also, uh, the downside of these uh, kind of systems that they lack a global clock, uh, whereby uh, we talk about uh, sharing of resources. You can't really say that every distributed system must be or must actually communicate at the same time. Yeah. Uh, they also have the fault tolerance mechanism. Yeah. So the independent failures of uh, components. Right? Also, we are going to look at the transparency uh, characteristics. Right? Uh, now. Maybe before we look at the types of distributed systems, again, you can always refer to a distributed system as a collection of independent computers that appear to its users as one computer. Uh, are we together? So if you have different collection of independent computers and you can always uh, access them using one computer, right? Uh, that can also uh, define what distributed systems are. So uh, one common distributed systems uh, is uh, the computing systems, right? Uh, this uh, actually uh, refers to cluster computing systems. Uh, cluster computing are kind of homogeneous uh, uh, computing systems whereby they rely on the same or use of the same uh, hardware and software uh, in operation. And also we have grid computing system uh, whereby we have different uh, computers are actually relying on different set of hardwares and uh, softwares in a kind of networked uh, environment. So that is co uh, computing systems. You also have distributed information systems. I believe we are aware of different information systems. Uh, talk about tra uh, transaction processing systems, talk about expert systems, uh, talk about decision support systems and even management information systems. Yeah, These are all form of distributed informative uh, systems. And of course, we have distributed 
perversive systems yeah when we talk about perversive systems uh, we refer to systems that can always uh, be accessed anywhere at any time right examples are mobile based uh, kind of uh, systems uh, we also refer to them as ubiquitous uh, systems so we're going to look at that so as mentioned we have uh, different categories of distributed informative systems as you can see enterprise application integration the pervasive systems could include uh, syst home systems yeah i can mention them uh, we also have electronic healthcare systems we also have sensor networks when we talk about maybe traffic management uh, systems that rely on sensors and even if you have uh, things like smoke detection systems yeah so those are kind of uh, a pervasive, pervasive systems that you can always uh, mention so uh, examples of distributed systems that you are aware of uh, we talk about local area network and intranet and that's why i started by mentioning that uh, we must have some kind of uh, fundamental understanding of how computer uh, network operates uh, we also have database management system right uh, looking at this kind of arrangement data can be replicated across different platforms and also it can be uh, we can update our data using different applications from different uh, uh, locations and everything uh, we also uh, have examples of automatic teller machine network yeah so if you go to your bank they'll assign you a particular credit card that you can always use to uh, withdraw your money from the automatic teller machine so these are kind of distributed systems yeah because uh, you can always use available teller machine at any given uh, location without relying on a centralized uh, teller we also have how the internet i think this is the biggest distributed uh, system that we have so far yeah? uh, every part of systems uh, of internet is distributed worldwide and of course, I'd mentioned about the mobile and ubiquitous uh, computing, right? So uh, uh, the first one is the arrangement of the, of the local area network. And uh, this one presents uh, how a distributed system within a local area network can be implemented. Uh, in a local area network, you're likely to get the email servers, right? Or any kind of server, talk about the print servers. Now print servers, these ones are, or the servers are there within a network to actually uh, listen to the requests from the client and respond to them in a timely manner yeah now servers play a very important role in any kind of uh, distributed system right so uh, how the client and the server communicate uh, is a very very important uh, uh, understanding in this particular uh, environment yeah so we must ensure that we have different kind of servers that are going to respond to the different requests within the uh, uh, the network now this is the I can talk about this kind of local area network as the like uh, the lowest or the first building block yeah towards the internet or towards accessing uh, the very many distributed uh, system it starts with a simple connection yeah uh, to your internet yeah uh, you proceed to your extranet and therefore you can always uh, access the internet so take note of the various uh, network devices that you are familiar with talk about the router what is the purpose of the router right now if you want to understand how distributed uh, systems work in terms of uh, how uh, network is established you need to understand uh, maybe the layers of the network yeah the operations of the seven layers of the network uh, from the physical all the way to the application and of course you have the database management systems now uh, as i mentioned a database is actually a container that enables us to store uh, different categories of data in an organized manner. Now, by doing so, it is going to actually uh, interact with the different uh, systems. Like, for example, if you want uh, to update or populate our container in this respect, we need to have maybe some sort of applications from different uh, quarters or locations. Yeah. Uh, talk about maybe an ERP system. Talk about uh, the various information systems that you are talk that you have mentioned, right? We will need to collect or actually populate the database using the different apps. What manages all these kind of arrangement? Uh, we have the database engines. Yeah. So every data uh, every uh, database management system has some kind of engine or softwares for that matter that monitors and regulates. Yeah, uh, the integrity of data that is within the uh, system 
it takes to ensure that there's always availability mechanism, right? And also uh, to ensure that maybe uh, the database is always at a consistent state, uh, this particular database monitor uh, tries to have some kind of internal, internally built uh, fault tolerant mechanism. And we have different uh, database management softwares that you can use. Talk about Oracle, talk about MySQL, and so on. Now, the good thing with a database management system, it has to play a role of communication between the different uh, components. It manages the hardware that the database sits on, and the softwares that interact with this particular uh, database, and even the users. Yeah. So the communication within the, or what we call the interprocessor communication is very, very important. And of course, we have the automatic or automated teller machine. Yeah. So how does this uh, kind of uh, network or ATM network uh, works? Now, you are aware that uh, when you visit your web, uh, your bank, they issue you with, or they create for you an account, a web, an account, assign you your account number, right? So uh, what normally happens is that uh, the ATM uh, is configured to actually replicate your user information across multiple servers, right? So that maybe if you're in one location, you can always get access to your account information. Uh, now, there are technologies that actually uh, works behind the scene. Like when we talk about the co computers controlling the teller machines, we refer to them as the, f uh, the front um, machines or front uh, computers that controls or manages the various teller machines. A good example of these uh, uh, front machines are the thin client uh, computers, right? Now, the automatic teller machine also has this characteristic of distributed system in that it must provide some kind of fault te tolerant mechanism and also provide availability of resource wherever the user uh, requests for them. Like if you want to withdraw your money, yeah, if maybe one kind of uh, uh, teller machine is not functioning, you can always use th uh, the next one, yeah, so that the available uh, front computers can link you to the closest information that you can get from your bank. So the user here must not know what is happening. If there's some kind of fail failure, behind the scene, this kind of tel uh, machine should be able to handle yeah, the failures by actually uh, taking the user uh, to the next working solution. So that's what we refer to as uh, the hot standby. Yeah? So you can always have your copy of data uh, accessible to the next uh, usable uh, system. So we also look at the internet and I've mentioned that this is the biggest uh, distributed system that we'll ever have because it connects different set of systems. Uh, talk about the um, Internet of Things. Uh, talk about maybe uh, the infrastructure that the artificial intelligence is uh, implemented on. So there are a lot of technologies that runs within the Internet that you need to understand. Uh, like how do you access the Internet? You need uh, the software such as the web browsers, right? And you have the technologies such as uh, the network uh, operating system, yeah, and so on. So we also have the communication links, like the media that help us to uh, link the different uh, networks. Uh, talk about satellite uh, dishes or satellite kind of networks. Uh, talk about fiber optic connections, right? So all these kind of arrangements ensure that uh, that we can always have a well. Uh, implemented distributed uh, system. Now, when you talk about the internet, the first thing that comes into mind is accessing a web page, right? So, uh, as you can see, I've displayed a website uh, 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 page here. So, what happens is that if you want to access <coughs> any resource within the website, you must first of all engage the what? Uh, the browser. We are going to see how the browser actually functions. So, uh, this also is a kind of uh, a distributed system in that you must, uh, you, you are able to actually access uh, the different web pages or websites, right, uh, using the www. Yeah. So talking about this, this is how it functions. Yeah. So we have the web servers that responds to the web uh, or uh, responds to the client request. So you can only do this or access the website only if you have the browsers. Talk about the Chrome, 
uh, the Firefox or Mozilla. Uh, talk about uh, the Microsoft Edge, any example that you might think of. Now, these are the softwares or the application softwares that allows us to access uh, the very parts, the very many parts of a distributed system. Yeah. Now, why do we say that the distributed system has a characteristic of transparency? Our web browsers, when you access a web page, they present just one single interface. Like for example, if you visit Learner's Coach for this matter, or Google, you'll only have one interface, right? But you must realize that there are a lot of different uh, structures behind that actually ensures that you access that particular uh, Google uh, page, yeah? So we can talk about the protocols that enables us to access this particular website, yeah? We, we can talk about the, uh, the different layers, right? So we need to understand how web servers actually respond to the uh, re to the request and, and so on. Uh, ubiquitous computing is established when you can be able to access uh, your various uh, systems at any point in time, uh, not um, taking not not taking a consideration to the location. Doesn't matter where you are, time and everything. So that's what we refer to as ubiquitous computing, and this is well. Are implemented when you have some sort of a wireless connection within our network and that's why the mobile factor comes in yeah so we can send messages uh, throughout regardless we can send messages throughout the system regardless whether you're using wired uh, technology or wireless uh, technology right so we implement some kind of general packet radio service yeah that can always a monitor or keep track of where this kind of mobile uh, systems are. We can also have the global system uh, for mobile communications, right, within this kind of uh, arrangement. So different devices can be connected within the wireless network and also connected within a wired network. So uh, let's expound our understanding of the, gen of the various common uh, characteristics of distributed system. So far we have looked at um, uh, concurrency or failure handling. So heterogeneity uh, is one common uh, feature of the distributed system. Um, I'll give an example of just the previous one that you have mentioned, accessing a website. Like for example, you can access different resources such as files from different uh, web pages. Yeah? So if you are in a position of actually interacting with different parts of the uh, distributed system, then we say that that is heterogeneous. Yeah. So there's no like uh, just one common or one specific resource. You can always access different web pages uh, using different protocols and so on. When we talk about openness, uh, the ability of a distributed system to handle or to accept other additional functions, yeah, is the openness a factor. Yeah, like for example, if you have like uh, uh, the ATM machine, yeah, and uh, if you are going to maybe access a particular bank account through your ATM, you could be having a Visa card, yeah. So if that is not working, you could go maybe to a, a different teller machine associated with a different bank account. Like for example. Uh, KCB in Kenya and Equity Bank in Kenya. Yeah, so there's openness across this particular distributed system. In that, if it, you work with, uh, it, it doesn't matter if you are using this particular uh, bank or you are using the other particular bank. So the technical arrangement that the distributed sys uh, system have, yeah, that they can be able to function with respect to maybe uh, what the user uh, expect is what we refer to as the openness. Or yeah. Uh, we talk about the open source, yeah. having uh, uh, that particular option of accessing uh, the various parts of this system right, without some kind of bottlenecks. Uh, we also have security. A good example is whereby maybe you want to do purchasing of some products online. So you have to visit a particular e-commerce website, uh, for example, Amazon in Kenya here, we have Jumia, right? So uh, the security aspect yeah, uh, must ensure the security aspect of your website must uh, ensure that at least you can transact you are uh, or you can do transaction within the, the, that particular site 
without actually uh, running uh, at risk. Like for example, you need to implement uh, the secure socket layers yeah, within those particular sites. Uh, scalability aspect, or uh, we talk about the characteristic of uh, data or uh, distributed system, we need to refer to as its ability yeah, uh, to be able to scale. Like a good example is the internet. Uh, internet always have uh, or accepts many users at any given point in time. Yeah, uh, so it should be it, sh it should be able to scale well with additional uh, components that are being added to it. If it's uh, any kind of system, yeah. Uh, if we add a different, uh, uh, maybe uh, softwares and hardwares, or uh, it should all support uh, the ever increasing number of users or applications that are going to be used within that particular uh, system. And of course, we have failure handling. We have talked about uh, fault tolerant. Yeah, We need to have some kind of um, uh, different servers that can replicate uh, user information across themselves so that if one server fails, automatically the other closest uh, server uh, picks up the role. And of course, we have concurrency. Yeah, All components within the distributed system must work concurrently uh, to achieve a given objective. And of course, you have transparency. Yeah, The fact that you can present or you can have one single interface yeah, that uh, gives you everything that you want, Yeah, that one creates uh, transparency. For example, if you visit a Google uh, website, yeah, uh, you can't really bother by understanding the underlying infrastructure behind the scene. So uh, that one offers a very good example of a transfer. So having mentioned that, so we can say that heterogeneity is the abil ability of uh, working with different uh, resources, hardware and software, right? Uh, if you're a user, we have the middleware that actually ensures that it protects you from understanding the technicality. Yeah, we refer to that as the abstraction layer. So middleware is very, very important. And also we have the mobile code yeah, we are going to look at how the Java applets or the web applets uh, function. Yeah? So this is how uh, computers can be able to uh, communicate with some kind of remote uh, connection or computers. We have also mentioned the openness. Yeah? So openness is concerned with the extensions and improvement of distributed systems. I've uh, given an example of an ATM machine where you can always add some kind of interface. Yeah? So new components have to be integrated with the existing components yeah, without experiencing what? Incompatibility issues. And of course, uh, we have mentioned about security. When we talk about security, we have to protect the confidentiality of, inform of data. Uh, we should ensure that there's availability at all time. And of course, the integrity of data must be upheld. And all in doing this, we'll have, uh, we'll uh, actually prevent this kind of data breaches. So an uh, example is, uh, for instance, if you are trying to, if you're a doctor requesting records from the hospital, confidentiality has to be upheld. So our servers need to be very, very uh, secure. Uh, I also gave an example of purchasing uh, through online. Uh, of course, we have new challenges that are coming up or that are already there. Like, for example, the interception or when someone uses the mobile code, uh, for example, when you're using the uh, mobile applets, I mean the web applets, yeah, these small programs that stores themselves within the browsers, yeah, uh, mostly hackers use those particular codes uh, to gather users' information without their consent. And of course, we have denial of service attack, yeah, uh, creating uh, resources not be, uh, being available. You can't be able to access the resources wherever you have you want them. So we have also the distributed denial of service attack as another new challenge. Now we have mentioned the scalability, ability of a, a system to accommodate more users, right? Uh, also respond faster, yeah? So this one, can the scalability can be handled by actually ensuring that we add more resources to the available uh, systems. Uh, talk about processors, they should be fast enough, uh, memory, right? So uh, when you are uh, also when you are designing these particular components in future, they should be uh, scalable. Now, uh, failure handling, we have also mentioned this. Uh, when the hardware fail, when the software fail, 
or when the network fail we need to have a way of or another option of ensuring that the communication uh, still continues within this particular system right so we have said that this particular system must maintain availability right uh, we need to have like 99.9 percent .9 yeah, availability of these particular resources that you're looking for. so we can achieve this by through recovery we need to have some kind of backup systems uh, in case of some kind of um, a false realized uh, we also have to replicate the data across multiple uh, servers in what we refer to as redundancy so that we can always access at uh, the various states of applications uh, concurrency is also a very uh, vital uh, characteristic as, as i mentioned that components in distributed systems are executed in concurrent manner yeah so uh, this one actually uh, takes note of integrity of the system. Yeah, so we, if we don't really have concurrency within this particular distributed system, the chances that you can uh, lose the updates, uh, it will interfere with the, uh, some kind of uh, analysis, or it will provide inconsistent analysis. So concurrency is very, very important. Uh, we also have transparency, and I think we are going to take time to understand uh, how these particular distributed systems implement their transparency. How are they transparent? So, uh, distributed systems should be perceived by users and application programmers as a whole, rather than as a collection of uh, cooperating components. You remember I told, I gave an example of visiting the Google website. So, what presents itself is one application. Yeah. So the user looks at it as one, yeah, as a whole, but not being given different uh, options. So you just have that. So whatever happens behind the scene is get taken uh, care of. So uh, we are going to look at access transparency, and this enables local and remote information objects to be accessed using identical operations, right? So. Uh, a good example is maybe uh, when you want to run your SQL queries, yeah, you can use uh, queries and access the different database management systems that are there. Yeah. Uh, you should not also have issues navigating across the website because we have standard access protocols. Yeah. And also the file systems. We have the new file technology systems that you can always use uh, to access or to ensure that we have uh, transparency in accessing the given uh, various resources location also a distributed system must present transparency in location like for example uh, it enables information objects to be accessed without knowledge of their location right uh, you when you browse the internet and you pull up a given web page you really don't uh, need to understand where this page the originality of this page, right? Your interest is to get the information from the web page. Yeah. So the location here has been uh, actually implemented in distributed systems to ensure that we uh, we can the objects or the information objects can be accessed without the knowledge of that particular uh, location. We can also talk about accessing databases from different locations. Yeah. So you pull data from that without knowing or actually being interested on the location and so on. Uh, concurrency, again, versus transparency. Remember, systems must concurrently perform their work uh, to achieve a given objective in a transparent what? A transparent manner. So it enables several processes to operate concurrently using shared information objects without interfering or interference uh, between them. Yeah. So we have the automatic teller machine. We say that you really don't need to uh, have issues accessing uh, maybe your equity bank uh, account using the teller from KCB. Yeah, so that's what you're talking about without interference between, uh, between them. And of course, you don't really need to have issues accessing your Oracle uh, data, updating your Oracle data, right? Uh, maybe using different uh, SQL uh, queries. 
and so on. So uh, we also have the replication component, right? And this is what brings on board the fault ter tolerance mechanism, right? When you replicate data across multiple servers, right, you are in a position to offer different options to the user, right? So uh, it enables multiple instances of information objects to be used uh, to increase reliability and performance without knowledge of the replicas by users or application uh, programs, yeah? Like for example, uh, you have distributed database management systems and even mirroring of web, of web pages, yeah? When you access, like for example, uh, I'm in Kenya. If I want to, like for example, access Facebook page, uh, these servers or the Facebook servers are, I believe, thousands or miles away from me. Yeah, but the Facebook server is going to replicate those web pages to the closest uh, server that I can access. Right. So that is an example of uh, mirroring of web pages. Uh, talking about failure transparency. Yeah. Uh, this particular system needs to really uh, conceal or hide uh, the faults that they have uh, amongst themselves, yeah? so that it allows and uh, allows users and applications to complete their tasks despite the failure of other uh, components. So we normally say that uh, if there is a failure that is observed, the time that it takes uh, for this particular system to proceed. Uh, from this particular fail or failure should be very minimal so that even the user can't understand that uh, there was a problem, right? Uh, example is database management system. So if you're accessing a particular data within your database management uh, database uh, system, the database management system should provide a fault tolerant mechanism so that you really don't uh, get issues with accessing your information, yeah. In, uh, even if there's a problem with the, one of the databases, uh, the mobility trans uh, aspect, yeah, we have talked about it, allows the movement of information objects within a system without affecting the operation of users or application. So this is uh, the component of communication. It doesn't matter where you are at what time and so on. Every um, if the, it is a if it's a matter of communication between the different uh, components of the system, uh, it should happen uh, regardless of uh, the location, the time, and so on. And of course, we have performance transparencies. This allows the system to be reconfigured to improve performance as load varies. So uh, one strategy that normally is implemented is a distributed uh, make a system, yeah, so that it always ensures that if there's a scalability issue, it ensures that there's a kind of a management system that takes a note of that. If uh, there's a failure issue, it takes note of that and ensures that uh, the performance is not affected. That's just distributed make system. And of course, we have the scaling uh, transparency. And we've mentioned that this allows the system and applications to expand in scale without change to the system structure or the application algorithm. So we have talked about scalability or scaling aspect. Examples are World Wide Web and also uh, the database management system. Of course, it, we can't have a good database system, I mean distributed system without some kind of um, issues, right? So uh, the issues are the most or the biggest component of a distributed system is how software uh, has been implemented. Yeah. So some specific issues for distributed system might include naming, communication, uh, software structure, system architecture, workload allocation, and consistency mechanism. So maybe we can take a look at this. So uh, like for example, in a network uh, setup, uh, the ability of a particular system to resolve maybe uh, the physical address into the IP address and back to the IP address and to resolve it back to the MAC address is very, very important. Uh, so th that's why we have the na file name servers, we have the domain name servers, and so on. So a name is resolved when translated into an interpretable form uh, for a given uh, resource. Like, for example, we can identify web pages computers using their IP addresses and port number. 
You can also have some kind of name resolution. I've just mentioned the domain name uh, servers, the file name servers. Yeah. So we also have the design co considerations. Yeah. Like for example, for the IP addresses, right? A choice of name space for each resource type. Right. So name service include a naming context. Yeah. We can have some kind of hierarchical arrangement when naming at the various service, uh, services. Uh, the communication aspect, uh, this is how the distributed components uh, are actually uh, communicate amongst themselves uh, when transferring data. And we call, uh, we need to understand how synchronization and asynchronization happens. Like if two uh, teller machines, or if you want to uh, access your money from a given teller machine, right? And maybe there's a kind of uh, uh, some kind of update that is happening behind the scene. We can use synchronous mechanism, yeah, or that kind of uh, teller machine can use a synchronous, whereby it can block a particular process, right, and enable you maybe to f uh, uh, finish withdrawing your money without actually interfering in that particular process, right? Whereas asynchronous. Uh, the two processes are allowed to uh, carry on yeah, without uh, blocking it from happening. So this one can always bring about other issues yeah, such as uh, insecurity, collision, interference, and so on. Uh, again, we need to have the abstractions that are defined through the various communication channels. We can have half-duplex half uh, channels, uh, we can have full duplex channels, and so on. Of course, the sockets, yeah, this is uh, where you can always maybe examples are uh, secure socket layer. We have different ports. Uh, remember, we have the secure and uh, and secure uh, ports. Now, the communication happens are can, and can be understood within the client server environment. Uh, again, we need to understand the software structure. If you understand how the computer uh, works like for example uh, when you type on your word document to the point at which uh, maybe you can share it uh, or send it via the email yeah so we need to have the hardware in place and remember the one component or one key functions of the software specifically the operating system is to manage uh, the various hardware resources right so in between the application that we're using and the operating system, yeah. So we have middleware, yeah. So a distributed system has middleware that provides an abstraction layer, yeah. So that when you're using a particular web browser or accessing a particular web page, you really don't uh, need to know the underlying uh, software or the operations of underlying hardware and uh, software. Uh, uh, that's another one. We can break it down in the distributed system. So this is how it looks like. Yeah. So you can see the distributed programming support. Yeah. Now we have the kernel. Kernel mostly represent how the operating system functions. Right. And of course we have the computer hardware and network. Right. So uh, the system architectures comprises of the client server. I, I hope you know how this one represented. We're going to look at it peer to peer how can we do the load balancing or fault tolerance using multiple servers proxies so on so um, the client server environment uh, this is whereby uh, the client requests for some kind of service uh, the server checks on the service and respond to it effectively so there's a back and forth communication between a client and servers yeah but what we need to understand in this kind of arrangement is that the server is the uh, powerful computer here or com uh, is a powerful system here yeah in that it can control all the communication within this kind of what arrangements right so uh when we look at client server there's one computer that actually um, manages the resources but when you have peer-to-peer -peer systems uh, we normally say that all uh all arrangements or all software, hardware, everything is uh, controlled at, uh, at individual computer level. Yeah, so all computers are peers. Yeah, 
in that they can be able to manage uh, do any kind of role that any other <laughs> computer can be able to do and that's why we call it peer-to-peer -peer system now this one has its own pros and cons and maybe we can see how distributed systems are implemented in a peer-to-peer -peer setup yeah so it creates some kind of uh, advantage and also it can have some kind of uh, disadvantages that comes along with it uh, when you have multiple servers as shown within this kind of arrangement it creates uh, some kind of uh, a fault tolerant mechanism in that uh, one server or they can be able to uh, balance the load they can be able to share uh, the different data across themselves so if client a maybe is requesting uh, some service from server B and server B is down uh, they can always you uh, be routed to the next server yeah so uh, services can always be provided uh, by different uh, servers irrespective of maybe where or which kind of client is uh, requesting for them uh, also we have the architecture represented by the proxy server we all know that a proxy server actually sits between the client and the serving machine like for example a web server if uh, you are accessing a particular website within your organization uh, normally proxy server is implemented to uh, to kind of establish a firewall mechanism right so that it monitors the client request and establishes whether it's going to uh, push the request uh, to the uh, the server or it can turn it down yeah so this one offers the it monitors the incoming and outgoing traffic and it can always block and allow some kind of um, uh, services to be requested or responses from the server uh, we also have the web applets and i think uh, we looked at it previously so in this kind of arrangement if you, are, you understand how the java applet or even the cookie functions yeah uh, when you first of all what the first for the first time if you want to access a particular website or a, a resource within a website uh, you uh, send the request to the web server and the web server is going to send a particular small code yeah uh, normally it's a few uh, kilobytes uh, that is going to store within the client yeah so this one is going to help communicate with the client on behalf of the web server yeah so with the time this particular applet is going to play the role of the main web server and that's why there's a disjoint in the second uh, uh, diagram so you can see that the, the arrangement is that the web server is being represented by that particular applet so this one we are saying that the applet has been installed within the web browser so automatically it relays uh, the request to the client we have the thin clients and computer servers this kind of arrangement is based on the atm machine you know, or how the teller machine functions right so if you have the main server yeah you can always replicate thin clients that are going to manage the various teller machines across uh, maybe the country yeah so thin machine uh, thin clients are just kind of uh, they map whatever uh, the main server uh, represent yeah so like the virtual arrangement where we have the uh, virtual box yeah this is whereby we have just some set of computers yeah that uses the softwares or maps the softwares and the hardwares from the uh, from the server again we can talk about the advantages of the distributed distributed systems so, so they have their disadvantages but uh, i think the advantages are many uh, looking at the disadvantages maybe they are very complex systems and there's a reason as to why uh, understanding distributed systems is very difficult because of their complexity aspect right but for sharing data they are very uh, good in that or they are autonomous systems they help in distribution of uh, data uh, they are offer full tolerance uh, replication of information across multiple uh, multiple servers ensures the availability of resources at any given time uh, when you talk about disadvantages as i mentioned 
uh, we can talk about the cost factor of developing these softwares that actually manages the distribution system. Uh, if you have the mobile codes that you're looking at, uh, this one can increase because if you use those codes to communicate between the different distributed systems, there are high chances that hackers can get access to them and they can be a source of bugs, right? And by looking at the scalability aspect, yeah, we need to understand how to uh, deal with this particular increased processing uh, overhead. So I think uh, this is a good foundation to start with uh, by understanding what distributed systems are, right? So in the next subsequent uh, videos, we are going to, I'm going to share with you, we are going to talk more about the specifics of the distributed system, uh, looking at maybe the distributed database system, uh, looking at maybe the software uh, uh, systems or distributed systems that runs within this particular uh, distributed system. So uh, thanks and always uh, visit and look at the various uh, videos. Uh, thanks.